Hello everyone, a new, very interesting fossil was recently discovered, and we want to put it in the context of our own evolution. So, let's jump right in. Remember way back that we did two videos on the so-called Cambrian Explosion, an event that lasted some 25 million years, starting 542 million years ago. While this may be a blink of the geologic eye, that's quite a long time for organisms. Problematically though, how paleontologists use the term Cambrian Explosion can be a bit confusing. The alleged explosion began at the start of the Cambrian, but Cambrian biodiversity continued radiating after the explosion, leading seamlessly to the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event. We also noted how there wasn't a single animal radiation event but two, one of stem lineages in the early Cambrian and one of crown lineages in the late Cambrian. So if you want to know all about the Cambrian explosion, go watch those videos. Links in the down part. Today we're going to discuss what came before the Cambrian, it's a lot, by the way. The story of life goes all the way back some 3.8 billion years ago to the early Archaean Eon, but that's a bit far. Let's play the tape of life forward to the Paleoproterozoic era. Two billion years ago, an endosymbiotic relationship be began between an Archaean and a bacterium, resulting in the precursor to the domain Eukarya. Fast forward to the Neoproterozoic era, which is divided into three periods, the Tonian, Cryogenian, and Ediacaran. The Tonian lasted from 1 billion to 720 million years ago. Molecular clocks estimate that the last common ancestor of animals lived upwards of 800 million years ago as part of a eukaryotic radiation possibly spurred on by eukaryovori, the preying of eukaryotes on eukaryotes. Be careful! It's a protist eat protist world out there. From 720 to 635 million years ago was the Cryogenian period, a time known for its multiple worldwide glaciation events. The supercontinent Rodinia became concentrated in equatorial regions where weathering of rocks is severe. Rock weathering pulls carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and this dragged the Earth's temperature way down on more than one occasion. But despite Earth's frigid temperatures, even at the equator, life was still moving along. In fact, the last common ancestor of Bilateria lived somewhere between the Middle and Late Cryogenian. Now even though molecular evidence points to animals having been around since the Tonian, the fact that they were mostly small and squishy until the Ediacaran drastically decreased their chances of getting preserved in the fossil record. See our video Taphonomy for more info. Thus, we enter the Ediacaran period, lasting 635 to 542 million years ago. It's named for the Ediacara Hills formation in Australia. The earliest formation of the Ediacaran is known as the Lantean, which lasted from 635 to 577 million years ago. This period is known for its ancient macrofossils, including some algae like Huangshanophyton and putative animals like Lantianella and Eosiathospongia. This formation ended with the Gaskier's glaciation event, and then life really started to get interesting. The remaining Ediacaran is broken down into three assemblages. The Avalon, 575 to 565 million years ago, the White Sea, 565 to 550 million years ago, and the Nama, 550 to 542 million years ago. It should also be noted that the Duchentuo formation also lasted from 635 to 551 million years ago. This formation is known for having putative phosphatized animal embryos, although some researchers have argued that they are instead acrotarchs. The first of the three assemblages, the Avalon, contains fractal rangiomorphs like Charnia, arboreomorphs like Charniodiscus, and some disc-shaped organisms like Cyclomedusa. Whether these are animals, independently multicellular protozoans, or something else entirely, is up for debate. As a 2016 paper by Ben Wan et al. notes, quote, Further, 
Ediacaran candidate animals were probably dominated by deep stem group representatives of various modern clades. Thus, perhaps not surprisingly, the phylogenetic interpretation of putative Ediacaran animal fossils is not straightforward. Many of them have suggestive but not definitive characters for phylogenetic placement, presenting tantalizing but frustrating cases for animal affinities. Close quote. Second, the White Sea assemblage contains some metazoans, such as the Nidarian Hautia and the clade Trilobozoa, as well as the oldest well established bilaterian fossils, including Dickinsonia, Kimberella, Caretza, and the new genus responsible for this video, Icaria. Dickinsonia is a mat like animal, and using its ontogeny, researchers have concluded that it is a basal bilaterian. It is a member of the clade Proarticulata, defined by having a body that is divided into isomers. Kimberella holds the record as the oldest bilaterian at 558 to 555 million years ago, being possibly even a spiralian, the group containing mollusks, annelids, rotifers, etc. Caretza is a possible ectisozoan as it potentially has imprints of both antennae and trunk limbs. More data is needed to confirm this. That brings us to Icaria, the new Precambrian bilaterian. Although this is an exciting fossil, it wasn't exactly surprising. Scientists have predicted that the last common ancestor of bilaterians, the so-called Urbilaterians, Ur meaning original in German, lived before the Cambrian, and would have had some specific characteristics. Like all bilaterians, except for the ones that secondarily lost it, such as starfish, the Urbilaterians had bilateral symmetry, which gives them their name. They also would have had a gut and differentiated anterior and posterior ends, meaning their heads were notably different from their behinds, which is neat to have. However, most research suggests that complex respiratory and circulatory systems of different bilaterian groups are independently derived, so the common ancestor wouldn't have had one. This meant our bilaterians likely relied on passive diffusion for oxygen uptake and nutrient transport, which puts a strong size constraint on them. So they would have been very small, smaller than fingernails, and given that they also lacked any hard mineralized parts, fossils of them would consequently be very rare, as noted before. We already have found trace fossils like long tracks of burrowers, which look like the ones that only bilaterians make, such as worms, but no fossils of an associated creature with these have been found. At least, that was until they found Icaria. As the technical paper describing it reads, quote, Analysis of modern animals and Ediacaran trace fossils predict that the oldest bilaterians were simple and small. Such organisms would be difficult to recognize in the fossil record, but should have been part of the Ediacara biota, the earliest preserved macroscopic complex animal communities. Here we describe Icaria warutia from the Ediacara member, South Australia, a small, simple organism with anterior-posterior differentiation. We find that the size and morphology of Icaria match predictions for the progenitor of the trace fossil, oh, I'm going to mispronounce this, Helminthoid dicnides, indicative of mobility and sediment displacement. In the Ediacara member, Helminthoid dicnides occur stratigraphically below classic Ediacara body fossils. Together, these suggest that Icaria represents one of the oldest total group bilaterians identified from South Australia, with little deviation from the characters predicted for their last common ancestor. Further, these trace fossils persist into the Phanerozoic, providing a critical link between Ediacaran and Cambrian animals. Close quote. Indeed, a number of different trace fossils are known from the Ediacaran, which provide pretty definitive evidence of the existence of Precambrian bilaterians. The burrowing behavior of those mysterious animals necessitates, according to the paper, in addition to the anterior-posterior differentiation, a coelom with bilaterian grade tissue organization, meaning it was triploblastic. Researchers have managed to infer that Icaria was a shallow water animal coming from sandstone strata between 560 and 551 million years ago, making it potentially the oldest total group bilaterian fossil. The last assemblage of the Ediacaran is the Nama. At the start of this assemblage, an extinction event occurred, drastically reducing biodiversity. The frondos rangiomorphs and the possibly related erniettomorphs made it out okay though, and some bilaterian body fossils are known from this time, such as Yelingia, another Precambrian bilaterian that was recently described. 35 specimens of Yelingia were found. It was a segmented bilaterian that also made trails, 
possibly related to panarthropoda or annelids. In fact, each of its segments had three lobes very similar to that of the later trilobites. The small shelly fauna also appears at this time, such as Claudina and Namakalathus. Claudina is especially intriguing for boreholes in its shell. The 2016 paper, The Latest Ediacaran Wormworld Fauna, setting the ecological stage for the Cambrian Explosion, notes, quote, 1. Prey selectivity indicates the neural sophistication of the predator. 2. Failed attempts, incomplete drill holes, demonstrate that mineralized exoskeletons impeded predators. And 3. Predation pressure may have played a significant role in the proliferation of mineralized skeletons, close quote. Therefore, the terminal Ediacaran saw the inklings of an evolutionary arms race that would carry over into the Cambrian radiation. The same paper hypothesizes that perhaps skeletonizing bilaterians outcompeted the Ediacarans due to, quote, active feeding modes and sediment restructuring capabilities, biomineralized armament against predators, generalist and opportunist adaptability to varying substrates, sexual and asexual reproduction for enhanced dispersal, resilience to environmental disturbance, and presumably high fecundity and rapid achievement of sexual maturity, close quote. The burrowing behavior, or bioturbation, of the small shelly fauna disrupted the cyanobacterial mats that the Ediacarans depended on and allowed oxygen to reach deeper into the substrate. Intense bioturbation likely led to the substrate and agronomic revolutions of the early Cambrian. And that brings us back to the Cambrian. As you can see, much happened prior to the Cambrian. While this period beautifully preserves both stem and crown members of modern lineages, giving us a window to our distant cousins like Hykuichthys, their ancestors hail from the Ediacaran. Though we have only a sparse fossil record of Precambrian bilaterians, the little we do have speaks volumes about our wormy ancestors before the Phanerozoic. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.